Hello everyone. Welcome to video lecture series of cloud computing. Today's topic is introduction to cloud computing. This is the first video of this playlist. So here in this particular video, I'll be talking about what do you understand by cloud computing, how to define means its definition, what are the properties, advantages and limitations. Let's begin. As here I have written that the cloud computing, this is the uh, actually some of the two terms cloud plus computing you can define as a cloud computing. So initially first you need to understand what is cloud, what is computing. So when we are talking about the term cloud, cloud is what? It is nothing but a metaphor which is used for a global networks. So cloud you can say it is a kind of global network of remote servers which operate as a single ecosystem and it is commonly associated with the internet. It means it is a group of servers and the second term which is about the computing from the term computing it means it must be clear to you means you have to compute something right means it is the activity related to the computers means how computers used to manage process and communicates information and this particular activity you can say the computing is so when you are aware with the cloud and the computing so now you will be able to define the term cloud computing it means you can say it is a on-demand availability of computer system resources right on-demand availability means whenever there is a requirement we can demand it so it is a on-demand availability of computer system resources resources like which can be used for the data storage, which can be used for the computing. And here the most interesting point is here none of the user is being involved in this active management. It means the objective of the cloud computing is to give access to data centers to many users and users can access the data from anywhere. This is the beauty of the cloud computing. And just when I'm talking about the cloud computing means definitely there must be a question in your mind who is who is using this cloud. Some of you may be aware but let me give you some examples. Uh, suppose we are talking about the healthcare companies, healthcare industries means how this healthcare industries are using the cloud means healthcare industries can use cloud to develop more personalized treatment for the patient. Let me give you one more example. Suppose we are talking about the finance companies, right? So there is always a possibility of the fraud detection. So finance companies may use cloud so that they can power their customers, their consumers in a real time situation so that they can be uh, like protected from the fraud detection and prevention. One more very interesting uh, example of cloud is the video game makers. What they does, video game maker means they have to deliver the online games, uh, online games to the users. The users numbers may be in the million and they may be at a different, different geo uh, geographical locations. So what video game maker used to do to deliver online games to those millions of players around the World. So these are the three interesting examples of the cloud computing. Now let us discuss about the cloud computing architecture. As you can see over here, this is the cloud. You can observe it over here. Cloud means there is a storage, there is infrastructure and the applications. And from this cloud, millions and billions of users may be connected, various mobile devices, desktop, laptops, other devices may be connected. So this is a kind of basic structure. So here you can observe when we are talking about the cloud computing means here it is different from the traditional computing. None of the user has to handle anything. It means here there will be a cloud vendor and that particular cloud vendor will be the responsible of purchase and maintenance of each and every hardware and the software. It means the cloud computing services can be charged depending upon the usage. 
Suppose there are two users, user one and user two. If user one has a requirement of suppose two servers and user two has a requirement of 20 servers. So depending upon the usage, they have to pay, right? And uh, you must be aware about the audio and video clips. Sometimes we used to stream something on the live uh, like uh, cases also. It means that is the case of the basic cloud service where our audio and video can be stored. And this can be stored remotely as, as well. And you are also aware with the Google Drive, Dropbox, OneDrive or Box. This is also a kind of what data storage platforms. And when you have to talk about the latest examples of the cloud computing services, you have heard about AWS, Azure, Google, right? So this is what the uh, like latest examples of the cloud services. Uh, see, nowadays you people may have attended uh, classes or may have attended various sessions on the Zoom also. So Zoom is what? Zoom is a cloud-based software platform uh, for the audio as well as for the video. It can record meetings. We can save the details. We can save the information to the cloud. And it actually enables user to access that particular information at any instant of time from any location itself. Uh, others, I must say, email, calendar, Skype, WhatsApp, these are also have to taken the advantages of cloudability. Along with that, Google Docs, Microsoft 365, these are uh, like users can access through the internet and users can be very, very productive because they can access from anywhere, they can access at any particular time. Now let us talk about the characteristics of the cloud computing. There are various characteristics, so let us discuss one by one. First is on-demand self-service. From the name itself, it is clear that whenever there is a requirement or depending upon the demand of the user, the service may be provided. So cloud computing service, it does not require any human administrator. Users can themselves raise the like requirement. They can monitor, they can manage the resources as, soon, as well as they require. Second is broad network access. Broad network access means it is actually this uh, cloud computing, this service is being provided over standard networks and heterogeneous devices. That is why we can, you can say broad network access. Rapid elasticity, the next characteristic. See, uh, the uh, computing services, uh, they will be having certain IT resources. It means sometimes, suppose today I have a requirement of some X components and tomorrow I'll be requiring some Y and then some Z. Means my requirement may increase or decrease. So depending upon the requirement, means whenever user requires services, it will be provided to the user. Otherwise, it will be scale out. Means it can be managed on the basis of the requirement, on the basis of the need only. Next important characteristic is resource pooling. Resource pooling means uh, when we are talking about the IT resources, you must be aware with the IT resources like networks, service, uh, servers, storage, applications and services. And they are present, uh, they, these actually resources are shared across multiple applications. Right? It means multiple clients are provided services from same physical resources, same IT resources can be shared among multiple users. Measured service. Measured service means when uh, like this cloud computing, it is uh, like work on the basis of the need itself. So depending upon the requirement of the user, the resources can be assigned to them. So that particular like utilization of resources can be tracked by the applicant as well as by the occupant also. It means it will provide both the user and resource provider to have the details of what has been used. And it can be done for various reasons, just for the monitoring, just for the effective use of resources for the payment as well. Next characteristic is pay as you go. Pay as you go means the amount of the resources uh, you are going to utilize accordingly you need to pay.
pay. If you are using more resources, you need to pay more. If you are decreasing your requirement, if you are using less resources, accordingly you have to. And it is easily maintainable because here there is a cloud operator who is maintaining. There is no requirement of the users to do the maintenance and the other things. Means it can be easily uh, maintainable by the cloud providers. Next, there are certain advantages of the cloud computing. Reduced cost. See, here, uh, see, when we are talking about the traditional computing means each and every user has to be equipped with every hardware, every software and depending upon the data storage, depending upon the amount of data, the uh, like uh, requirement will be increased because that much huge amount of data needs to be stored at each and every user. But in the case of the cloud computing, it reduces huge capital cost because if each and every user need not to uh, spend something for the hardware, for the software, because it is available on the cloud. Improved performance, because here the resources can be accessed very easily, very frequently, even within a few clicks, within a few minutes itself. It means it increases the speed and performance will be improved. Scalability, see this is a very important term. Scalability means uh, we can increase or decrease the requirements of the resources according to our need. It means it can be easily scalable for the business requirements. Suppose uh, initially I have uh, like uh, uh, taken few resources, but as well as my business is growing, I need some more resources. So I need not to buy that bulk amount of resources in advance. Whenever there is a requirement, I can scale up. I can request for the additional resources and accordingly I'll be paying. High storage capacity means very huge amount of data can be stored, can be saved by each and every user on the cloud. So cloud computing, it offers very high storage capacity of data. Productivity. Productivity means uh, you can define that uh, as, suppose uh, you are using cloud computing. It means you have to put very less efforts to uh, purchase, to manage, to maintain hardware, software, it means our productivity will increase, right? We need not to do any efforts for managing, for upgrading, for everything. So it is directly going to impact the productivity. Next important term is the reliability. See, it is always very important to know about the reliable, how much reliable is because we are sharing the data on the cloud, it means whenever there is a requirement, we must be able to take the backup and data recovery and that would be very less expensive and even it could be, it could be done at a very fast rate. So it is very reliable also because many uh, cloud providers, they are having the very high level of security, their commitments, everything. So they are very reliable. Security means most of the cloud vendors, they offer broad set of policies, means we will, they will, are not going to share the data with any other person. There are some technological policies also uh, for the security point of view. It means uh, our data, which we are going to save on the cloud or the services which we are taking because there is involvement of the third party, it is very, very secure. Since there are various advantages, but there are certain limitations as well. So some of the limitations of the cloud computing, security and privacy are the very, very important factor. Here, see what you are doing because cloud computing, this is the biggest concern, biggest platform and we are sharing our much of the data and everything and cloud is actually being handled and provided by the third party. It means it is always involve a risk because we are handovering our sensitive information to the cloud service providers. Though cloud computing vendors, they ensure high secured password protection, any kind of security breach will not be there, but still it is a limitation. Lock-in. Lock-in means it is also very difficult for the users to switch from one cloud service provider to the another. So lock-in means it is difficult. That is why it is a, a limitation over here. 
Next limitation is isolation failure. Isolation failure means whenever there is a term failure, it means some of the risk is being involved and the risk of failure of isolation mechanism, it may impact uh, the separate storage, it may require memory, sometimes routing between the different tenants. So there might be a possibility of isolation failure. And the last important point is the management interface compromise. Management uh, interface compromise means, uh, suppose we are talking about the public cloud provider, right? So customer management interface that will be accessed through the internet and it could be accessed from anywhere. So sometimes there may be a possibility that suppose you have raised a request that you would, would like to delete the data, but that data is not going to be deleted or the data is not being deleted. So there are various factors because of which it may not happen. Factors may be there might be a possibility that the duplicacy of the data. So one stock you have deleted, but the other copy is being available. Sometimes the disk which is being used to store the data of the multiple tenants, multiple users that is going to be destroyed. So there might be certain uh, like um, limitations in the term of the management interface compromise. So this is what about the limitations. Thank you so much for watching this video.